alcohol. Jeezy's alcohol brand has a Knight Templar symbol called the Cross of Lorraine, which is one of the highest orders of Freemasonry. After see New York, we could all go with the bus company's special super sitter fare. So I asked AI who started the Federal Reserve, and it came up with these pictures. They had utilized an ancient alien building. Hitchens are able to be used for surveillance because they have something called a homing instinct. Yo, what's up, Lucid Crew? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, I am Lucid Rob, and today we're going to look at videos from all over the internet, videos that you send me to figure out what's real, what's not, what's creepy, what's dumb, what's scary. Just try to figure it out, man. There's, there's just way too much stupid stuff going on. <laughs> the world's insane right now, so let's get into it. to begin its reign of terror. <sighs> Gangway! Oh, oh. Have to see New York. We could all go with the bus company's special super sitter fare. Nine bucks? This one's on me. Let's hope Osama Bin Laden doesn't know show tunes. God, I hope I get it. I hope I get Wait and see. No, you stupid. Well, you're stupider. No, you It's time. We will now strike at the heart of American defense and destroy the Pentagon with one swift Deadly blow! <laughs> I mean, honestly, maybe. <laughs> I mean, it could allude to that. I mean, here's the thing, though. Like, the the Twin Towers were a historic, you know, landmark before they fell in uh, 2001. So, I mean, they're going to be used in media, right? The, the pyramids are destroyed in the new Transformers movies. I mean, so much shit happens to the Statue of Liberty and Planet of the Apes. I mean, Ghostbusters. So, I think it just comes down to coincidence in this case and in a lot of cases. I mean, who knows? Some of these... Maybe Disney would be the one that would be alluding to something. But I don't, I don't think that's always the case. I think, you know, there is such a thing as coincidence. There is such a thing as, you know, utilizing historic places in media because people are familiar with them. So I'm going to say that this one is probably not what the video is alluding to. But then again, what do I know? I'm just a dude sitting in front of a computer recording videos for YouTube. So... <laughs> Well, 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 would you look at that? So starting Monday, March 11th, the Fed's emergency bank lending program is to expire. So what this means is that no more new loans are going out after this date. You got to remember, this is how banks make their money. So we're going to see which ones can handle it and who can't. And remember I told you guys that our next pandemic is going to be a financial one. Let me show you why. Just four years ago, on the same date, the World Health Organization declares COVID-19 a pandemic. Now, what are the chances on the same date, four years ago, that signifies a pandemic? Hmm. So in part one, I showed you guys how the government could have created Bitcoin. And here's the thing, Bitcoin's having is every four years. So it's supply and demand and makes it more scarce. It's exactly aligned with the election, which is every four years. You guys won't believe this. So I asked AI who started the Federal Reserve and it came up with these pictures. And do you guys see that right there? It is a Bitcoin logo. I even asked it to make more variations of that one and it came up with this. I mean, what does Bitcoin have to do with the Federal Reserve? What if, just what if, the government knew we were in financial trouble a long time ago and they gave us something to believe in because they knew the dollar is worthless. This whole loan thing affects mortgages, car loans, small business funding, you name it. I feel like all this is self-inflicted, so this year is going to be very interesting in how all this plays out. What do you guys think about all this? Honestly, that would not surprise me one bit if Satoshi ended up being the Federal Reserve or just like some government agency creating Bitcoin. Would not surprise me at all, especially it would be a way to, under the radar, move people to a digital currency, right? And then maybe eventually someday make 
Bitcoin like the standard, right? That they already have control of. I don't know. I'm, I'm not super well versed on crypto. I've traded a little bit. I've mined a little bit. I've, I've done stuff like that over the years. <laughs> Lost a ton of money <laughs> trying to make money from it. Uh, I think as most people have. I don't know who. who I, I don't know if you know more about this. Like if you, if there's an actual possibility. Like if you know about crypto, if it is possible for this scenario to be true, let me know in the comments. Uh, I would love to get a better understanding of this. Seeing what's happening right now. And this goes much farther than the royal family of Lestar. Thomas Kingston passed away at 45 years old, right? We know that Jacob Rothschild just passed away. Now we have many reports coming out saying King Charles six months to live because pancreatic cancer. Again, we'll say allegedly, but many reports. Also, when he took the throne, many people were saying he's not going to be there for that long. And then just a few hours ago, Pope Francis was hospitalized with the flu. And he's actually been in quite a bit lately. And at the same freaking time as all the stuff I just showed you, we have Mitch McConnell resigning. By the way, his net worth is like $30 million. I mean, his job is pretty easy. But one of life's most underappreciated talents is to know when it's time to move on to life's next year. And this is what we've been seeing lately from him. Okay. Senator, you're up for election in three short years. What are your thoughts on that? I'm sorry, I had a hard time hearing you. That's okay. What are your thoughts on running for re-election in 2026? What are my thoughts about what? Running for re-election in 2026. Oh. That's good. Uh... Did you hear the question, Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? Yes. All right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Senator. Penny. Yep. So what's going on? Where are all these people going? What's going on? I'm all for, like, a change of power. I think that, like, nobody should be in certain positions forever, especially when they make, like, huge decisions, right? You figure somebody from you know, 80 years ago, <laughs> if someone's 106 years old, um, and they're still making laws based on, you know, their view of the world that hasn't changed since 1930, you know, it's probably, probably time to refresh it. I do think that we should be vetted. I don't, don't think that we should try to be, you know, cater to s certain people just because they're, they're modern and, and whatever. I think that we should vet the people that we have in charge and speaking for us, uh, get the right person for the job, no matter what they look like or their beliefs or whatever. I think it should just be fair across the board. Uh, with that being said, though, I do think that, you know, a lot of people are like laughing at, you know, Biden laughing at Mitch here and whatnot because like they're old and, and stuff. I think it's sad, actually. I, th I think it's sad that people haven't, you know, forced them to remove themselves before it got to the point to where they are, you know, publicly embarrassed um, for, you know, slipping into senility or, you know, I think Mitch had like a stroke or something. I'm not sure, but he, you know, just kind of froze up. And I think that just comes down to, you know, monitoring these people in these positions. Say, okay, like you're getting up there in age. Uh, if we can't, you know, trust this person to have, you know, good health and be like coherent and responsive and stuff, how do we expect them to, you know, make big important decisions that run the country, right? And keep us safe and, and keep us provided for. I got a story for y'all. So tell me why I'm just finding out, right? That doctors could use ultrasound to regrow a missing tooth. So what's the point of veneers or, you know, pearly whites when fake pearly whites, when you could literally have your own pearly whites? So if everything is not frequency and vibration, how is it possible, right? For someone to be able to use a ultrasound device to help your teeth to regrow. That's amazing to me. And for some of y'all who don't be believing in some of my facts, that all the time I'm on the internet talking about facts. Because sometimes I'll just be talking about mythology and shit like that. I don't really be trying to talk about just pure facts. I like to enjoy life. But for the ones that like to hear f pure facts, I'm going to leave like two articles for y'all to go check out. So you can see that I'm actually telling the truth about this uh, ultrasound. And that ultrasound could help to regrow your tooth, to induce it to grow pretty much. I think there's a lot of stuff that they can do that they just don't allow. I have these conversations a lot on this channel to where, you know, they like to treat 
the issue and not cure the issue. Because, you know, if you treat it, you have to come back for multiple treatments. The problem persists if you don't fix it. You got to go in, got to go back. Okay, it gets a little better. You can tolerate it. Oh, it's bad again. Go back as opposed to just fixing the issue. Regrowing teeth is crazy, though. That's that's a crazy thing because dental work is it's so expensive. We do know everything. We're just remembering it. Plato said that we are experiencing the anamnesis, the remembering. We are remembering the members that are lost. Because the theologians will tell you that, oh, the Alcyone, the brightest star of the Pleiades, is where God rules the universe. It's the throne of God. Charles Taze Russell, the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses, says that. A lot of them said that. Because it is. It's a pineal gland. That rules the whole endocrine system. That's the ruler. That's God. That's heaven. And that's why they will tell you from the church, oh, you don't take mind-altering drugs. Well, what was the Eucharist originally? The Eucharist that they gave you was the Amanita Muscaria mushroom. Hello, you have an out-of-body experience and then you look at your body and you go, aha, I'm not my body. And then you wake up to the fact that you're spiritual and then you live a spiritual life. And how many doctors, great doctors, have used LSD to cure depression, suicidal tendencies with one dose? Great men who have cured people. They don't have to take all these antidepressants and things that they give you. And they're cured forever, gone. Because what does it do? Well, it takes you back in your past and it shows you. It shows you all the things that you've done to, to damage yourself and other people have done and everything like that. And you just shed them. Because if you see them, you shed them. DMT is naturally produced by your pineal gland. A lot of people won't admit to it. You know, uh, Francis Crick discovered uh, the DNA on LSD. Leonardo da Vinci and uh, Michelangelo attribute their wisdom to the rue plant. It's been going on for thousands of years. That's why the animals, the deer, will just jump. They'll kill you for an Amanita muscaria mushroom because there are levels of consciousness. And some animals are locked into the lower levels, you know, the animals without a liver, then, you know, smarter ones like cats and dogs and horses and domesticated animals, they're partaking of a higher consciousness until they reach the human consciousness which is the Christ consciousness that's what it means when the Bible says and the Christ came in the flesh that two-way consciousness which animals don't have and now with this new wave that's coming oh a lot more is going to be restored a lot more of our psychic powers that's how much power we've got guys I'm just gonna say that I do not condone the use of any illegal substances or illegal activity um, but I will say that in taking mushrooms myself over the years i have learned a lot about myself i've become way more chill and accepting of things that are out of my control i've become way better at controlling things and accepting things and just maneuvering and navigating life for things that are in my control uh, i'm way more humble nowadays i'm so laid back i'm almost never angry <laughs> like I also have Tourette's syndrome. I have a lot of people comment. They're like, Rob, you look like you are popping pills or something. I'm like, no, dog, I'm, I have Tourette's syndrome. And when I'm sitting here recording these videos for like an hour, it makes me anxious. And it's hard to sit still for the entire time. So like my body wants to move and I want to fucking tick and I want to fucking wink at things that aren't there and make sounds and stuff. But mushrooms have helped that as well, believe it or not. Like when I, when I microdose, like I have control of my involuntary ticks, which is insane. It's nuts. Like, I actually thought I was cured one day um, until the psilocybin wore off. And then I was just like, started the tick again. So, it's a lot of, lot of benefits, man, that I've experienced from, you know, safely, you know, taking mushrooms and stuff. I'm not just eating handfuls and driving my car and shit, obviously. But I, I have also become just way more open to, you know, spirituality and, you know, the possibilities of the weird stuff that happens in these videos and the weird things that people see and experience in life and the things they talk about in mythology and religion and stuff. It's, it's been pretty awesome. Not gonna lie. But uh, don't do drugs, kids. Wait, pigeons aren't real? I just did a deep dive on pigeon surveillance. Did you know that there's an entire group of people out there who believe that pigeons aren't actual birds, but instead believe that they are surveillance drones designed to collect real-time public data? Obviously, that's a conspiracy theory, right? But when I actually started looking into it, I learned that back in the 70s, the CIA actually did use pigeons as spyware. The Takana Project was a CIA operation that explored the use of pigeons with tiny cameras to automatically take photos of targeted areas. CIA wasn't even the first government organization to do something like this. During World War II, the British intelligence ran a secret pigeon service which dropped pigeons with questionnaires attached to their legs over occupied Europe. More than a thousand pigeons returned with messages including details of rocket launch sites and German radar stations. Pigeons are able to be used for surveillance because they have something called a homing instinct. Once trained, a pigeon can be dropped hundreds of miles away from home, somewhere that they've never even been before, and they will find their way back home. 
But listen, now that you know that pigeons can and have been used by the government in the past, what do you think? Could pigeons be, could, could pigeons be not real? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> that's a goal now. I, want to, I just want to see a pigeon with a big ass camera strapped to its chest. <laughs> oh man. That, I mean, really, that's just, come on. I mean, of course there are people that believe it. Because why wouldn't there be? Uh, but, <laughs> I don't know, man. If, if pigeons are surveillance drones, I'm just mad that they don't still have those big cameras strapped to their chest. I, I feel like that's just a waste <laughs> of just good aesthetics, right? means body-eating spirit, alcohol in Arabic, and why vodka is called spirit. Jinn is a jinn, which are invisible creatures in early religions. This is where jinx comes from. When you jinx something, it means bad luck, because the spiritual planes is what they are hiding from you. They want you to believe everything is just physical. Jay-Z's alcohol brand has a Knight Templar symbol called the Cross of Lorraine, which is one of the highest orders of Freemasonry. Alcohol destroys the connection between your oversoul and your physical body by destroying brain cells which then makes you more vulnerable for demons to enter your electromagnetic field and take control society is being ran by an ancient dark cults which uses black magic and the dark usage of alcohol why do you think these are illegal and this is legal okay i'll bite i'm here for it yeah why not i mean alcohol is awful i'll have like an occasional cocktail once in a while with like dinner i may have a drink like once every two months maybe I mean, it's awful, dude. Especially nowadays. Like, the older I get, I have, like, two drinks, and I just, I'm just sluggish the entire next day. And if, if I get drunk, man, it's literally, like, four days of just not feeling like myself. The next day is terrible. Awful. And it takes me, like, almost a week to get, like, back to, to feeling like my normal self. So it's just not worth it to me. And it's crazy that, like, alcohol is so destructive. It's so much more destructive than a lot of the illegal substances that we're not allowed to take. And, and it's actually, like, pushed, right? So uh, I'm definitely in, the, in line with thinking that, you know, they, they, the people, the powers that be or whatever, whoever's pulling the strings wants us weak and easy to control and, and not 100%, right? They don't want us to have mental clarity. They don't, they don't want us to be smart, intelligent, proactive. Um, they don't want us doing our own research. They don't want us doing any of that stuff. So, you know, why wouldn't they push something that is poison? Because alcohol is legitimately poison. Have you heard of the hollow earth theory before? What if it wasn't just a theory? Some claim that an ancient advanced civilization lives beneath the ground, with elites secretly aware of it. Allegedly, these elites, including politicians and scientists, conduct covert expeditions to access underground cities. Supposedly, these hidden discoveries include advanced technology and energy sources that they withhold from the public to maintain control. While mainstream scientists discredit these notions, Believers see anomalies in some satellite images, and some of the pictures that shows a giant hole in the ice and historical records as proof of a vast hidden civilization. And what supports this theory is that in 2017, German geologist and his team collected core samples from deep within the frozen Antarctic seafloor, and what they discovered was astonishing they saw more than 60 different taxa of plants, similar to something that you would find in a rainforest in a temperature regime that was similar to what we today know from northern Italy. However, these theories remain unproven, with clear evidence confirming their validity or not. Because until today there is no clear explanation. What do you think? Hollow Earth is definitely one of the theories that I am like pretty on board with. I think that's probably the biggest reason why I think that I don't... I mean, it's not the only reason. It's, I don't believe that the Earth is flat. But it's one of the bigger reasons is that I'm, I'm more in line with Hollow Earth. I think it is more realistic. And that doesn't mean that there aren't continents that they're not telling us about. No fly zones. They're definitely probably hiding stuff from us. Antarctica, there's probably some gnarly stuff there um, that they're keeping secret right maybe that's where atlantis is maybe that's where the garden of eden is who knows right but i am i really like the idea of hollow earth i think that you know it's very possible that an advanced civilization from back in the day would have built something underground like underground fallout bunkers but like an underground civilization to escape you know in in devastating event to the earth right something that wiped out the dinosaurs or wiped out you know people back in the day uh, I think it would make sense that they would be living underground and they'd be, you know, more advanced than us and 
probably are all the ships and stuff that we're seeing. I think it'd be cool that if UFOs were from outer space, but I think a lot of them are probably from just right here. Inside the hollow earth, been living there for 2,500 years. There is one continent inside the earth and one ocean. Their capital city is built around the original lost garden of Eden. The vegetation grows like a paradise. The people live to be up to 800 years old. They communicate with telepathy. The inner earth people have built these androids that fly their flying saucers out to reconnoiter the outer earth. Our government has been knocking flying saucers out of the sky and back engineering these flying saucers. The people that live in the hollow earth are not extraterrestrials. They're from the lost tribes of Israel. As I was saying, I think it makes sense. I just wonder why they would not tell us. Whoever, the people in inner earth, do they want to stay away from us? Like, do they want to be separate? Because if they wanted, they could just fly the flying saucers out here and just tell the world like hey you know this is our planet by the way what's up either hey let's be friends or you know hey we're just gonna destroy you because you're destroying the planet the project serpo alien exchange program is a conspiracy theory that's been making waves for quite some time this theory suggests that the u.s government has been involved in an interstellar exchange program with extraterrestrial beings from a planet called serpo located in the Zeta Reticuli star system, the same system believed to be home to the gray aliens. The beings from Serpo, often referred to as Ebens, are said to be quite different from the grays. They're described as being humanoid, standing about four to five feet tall, with a skin tone that ranges from olive to pale yellow. Their eyes are slightly larger than ours and almond-shaped, but not as large as those of the grays. These unique features have made them a subject of intrigue in the world of alien conspiracy theories. A central aspect of the Project Serpo theory is the advanced technology possessed by the Ebens. It's believed that they have mastered interstellar travel using a propulsion system that allows them to traverse the 39 light years between Earth and Serpo in just a few months. This technology could potentially explain some of the UFO sightings that have been reported over the years. According to the conspiracy theory, the U.S. government has been in contact with the Ebens since the 1940s. The story goes that after a UFO crash in New Mexico, the government recovered a surviving Eben, who then facilitated communication between Earth and Serpo. This led to the establishment of the Project Serpo Alien Exchange Program in the 1960s, where 12 humans were allegedly sent to Serpo to live among the Ebens for over a decade. The purpose of this exchange program remains a mystery. Some believe it was an attempt to foster diplomatic relations between Earth and Serpo, while others suggest it was a scientific mission aimed at gaining knowledge about the Ebens and their advanced technology. There are even theories that suggest the Ebens are helping humanity advance technologically and spiritually. I hope so. I, ho I hope that there's an alien race um, helping us grow and, and giving us technology and stuff. I just wish that they would show themselves and just let us know if if they're talking to the government and they're giving the government technology whoever catholic church whatever they're giving them technology that means that there's like a filter you know what amount of that technology comes back to us you know how, how much of that do we see so if we were just in in contact with just aliens directly and they were just like hey we want to give this to everyone all the people then there, there wouldn't be that you know that filtering of knowledge i guess you could say a giant petrified crocodile. This cannot be denied. Incredible detail for us to see. Keep watching. The following images might just blow your mind. Could this be the eye of a giant? Do you remember being told stories as a kid about giants being turned to stone? You see it happen in movies too, remember, they always hide the truth in those.
Thanks for watching. Like, follow, and comment for more content like this. I don't know what the deal with that giant crocodile was. Or alligator. It looks more like an alligator um, than a crocodile. But I don't know what the deal with that was. I don't know how big that was, actually. I don't know if it was carved. I don't know if you have any information on that one. Let me know, because that was pretty un undeniably a an alligator. But the rest of them, I don't know, man. I mean, I don't want really to get a lot of flack for this, but I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's just pareidolia, man. I think it's just, you know, we see what we want to. I'm looking out the window right now, and I see a cloud. And I'd be like, oh, that looks like a fish. But it's not. It's it's a cloud. I'm looking at it right now. Um, I could force that, right, in my mind and see a fish in the cloud right there. Maybe it is. A big petrified cloud fish. Who knows? I don't, I don't make the rules. I'm not a cloud doctor. But the Lunar Operations Command is a moon base, and... It was built out originally by the Germans in the late 1930s, early 1940s. Um, while they were building this um, complex, they had utilized an ancient alien building that was not too terribly far away. They had found a bunch of these buildings on the moon and they had found one of the buildings that they were able to patch up with some of the concrete they made from the local redolith. They then were able to pressurize it and use it as a base of operations while they built out the Lunar Operation Command. After a number of years and uh, after Operation Paperclip, it uh, uh, served its purpose and integrated the Nazis into the military industrial complex. The LOC was handed over to the Americans. We did take German scientists after World War II. Uh, this makes me think, what else we got? Did we get technology they had been working on? There's a reason we took the scientists, because we only took people that were better than the people we had, or that were up to par, or that knew something we didn't. And there's all this thing about, like, you know, Adolf was, like, searching for the Holy Grail. He was obsessed with, you know, finding the Holy Grail, finding, you know, ancient relics and tablets, and he was, you know, obsessed with this stuff. I don't know, man. It, it's it's so nuts. You know, maybe they're still in charge. You know, maybe that's why things in America are, are going in a way to where it's so controlling and overpowering. Uh, finger painter. <laughs> the world is so crazy the world is nuts america it's pretty nuts with that being said it's important to realize that you know the the media youtube social media everything is focused on negative stuff everything is focused on things to elicit a emotional response from you a negative response fear anger you know we're, we're more passionate about that because we're guarded and we're defensive and that causes us to interact more and it gets more engagement and makes people more money and gets more views so that's what things are optimized for but it's important to remember that all these things that are going on around us all these this war and this you know famine and this sorrow and crime and violence and everything like it's not it's not happening every day for us the majority of us if it is i'm very sorry i grew up in a rough neighborhood i understand the fear of bad things happening to you but i mean just look outside my window right now like there's nothing bad going on out there right now. And we got to keep in mind that the negativity in the world is not a reflection of the life that we live every day. Uh, and we shouldn't focus on that. We shouldn't make the negativity that we're being fed to elicit fear, elicit, you know, distrust, sorrow, whatever from us. That should not be what our main focus is. It's fun to look at the stuff. It's It's good to be aware of the bad stuff. And it's nice to, you know pay attention and be cautiously optimistic of the things that are going on around us. But at the end of the day, you have to keep in mind that life is a beautiful thing. It's full of beautiful people. Uh, it's full of wonderful people and friendships and connections like here in the lucid crew and in, on this channel and the comments and, and my discord and it's just full of great people. And it's important to keep that in mind that the negativity is not a reflection of your life. It's just an unavoidable fact of life in general and our lives are what we make it due to the people around us and the situation we put ourselves in and what we choose to give our energy to. So that being said, thanks for watching, Lizard Crew. Stay cool, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.